Thank you so much for joining us here at the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560. The, the answer. answer. With Deborah Schreiner and Jim Leahy. You know, that t- that Trump segment goes by so quickly. I know. And I don't mean to eat it up with, you know, because there's so many different stories we could talk about. We could talk about the G7. We could talk about, there's so much going on. <laughs> with Trump, there's always a lot going on. Right? We could just talk about his, his tweets. But, but uh, or or uh, Mika in, in what's his name's reactions to everything he does. Oh, Mika. Joe. Mika and Joe Scarborough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, uh, he like lives in their head. That's all they think about is is Donald Trump. Do you know who we're talking about? No. Uh, from, and they're on MSBC and Morning Joe. They have the show. Oh. And that and I heard her say the other day that you know what Trump's really mad about? He can't watch porn in the White House. I'm like. If what? There, where did you get that? And even who you, says that kind that, of thing? That's what Mika said. It's like anyway, Samantha B. She like, makes this stuff how up. Dare I, agree, you? I agree. Anyway, let's do let's do the next segment. And now here's that man with a head just crammed full of knowledge, Mister Know It All. You know, we had a segment where I said Barry Sotero because that was his name, and people thought that was offensive. It's like, hey, you know, it's kind of a shot, but because that's your name, it's that was I your birth it. name. It's it's like call him no, Muhammad actually, Ali. His bar- birth name is is Barack Obama. Is his birth I thought name. it was Barry. S- no, that was his. He wa- changed his, his mother's name. name. He changed his name. They always called him Barry as a child, and his mother married another man, Sotero, and they moved to Indonesia. And in Indonesia, his name was his adopted his stepfather adopted. He adopted his stepfather's name. It was Barry Barry Sotero. I, I so that's where the number. That's where the name comes from. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that. I don't either. I want I what just, I want to talk it about. Just gets me. I never heard that. I, I, what I want to talk about is that, this question that I got this week, which is, hey. Uh, Attorney, because someone calls me and they got because a lot of people wait till they get levied before they call a lawyer. Okay, here's my advice to you: if you owe the IRS money, don't wait for them to start taking stuff away from you because they're going to do it. It just takes them a long time to get to you, so you start get you get kind of passive and thinking, "Well, it ain't going to happen to me. They're not going to. They don't care about me. Uh, I don't owe them. There's million. There's th- people owe millions. I'm off the radar. Yeah, they don't. I'm under the radar screen. They don't see me. They're not going to worry about me. Let me tell you, they're worried about you. Okay, you're easy. You're an, you're easy prey, and all they have to do they know where you bank, right? Because your bank your bank reports to the IRS every dollar they give you. They report it to the IRS, so they know you bank where you bank. They know, so they go to your bank and they say, "Boom, that's it. You're, we're going to levy your bank account." And we talked about levying in a, levying your bank account here and on the show. You have no idea it's coming, and and you don't. And so th- they take then they call me and then they say, uh, and "So the question today would be, you know, once they levy my bank account, don't they have to send me?" notice again before they levy it again and the answer is no they've already sent you notices there's a sequence of letters that they must send before they can they can levy you okay and and you have an opportunity to appeal but that comes that comes a long time usually now it doesn't have to be a long time because once they give you the letter there's a 30 days where you can appeal and in those 30 days they can't take things away from you because you can appeal it but if you do not appeal it within those 30 days on the 31st day I think technically they could probably um, take things away from you but it doesn't usually happen that way they usually send you this letter and they say hey there's a notice of, of intent it's called a notice of intent of Oh, there's a it's, come on <laughs> the stop. notice of intent to appeal. I mean, the, the notice of intent to levy. You get this notice of intent to levy, and it gives you 30 days to appeal. And if you don't do that, then they can take stuff away from you. And it's usually sometime after you get that notice of intent to levy. Some months later, usually. Sometimes a year later. Sometimes years later. And then they start taking things away from you. And then you say, "Well, don't. I didn't get a notice. Yeah, you did. It was just some years ago." But it's already it's still in effect, and it's the same thing now. Once they have the authority to, to levy you, and they levy your bank account, and then maybe you contact them, and we contact them, they say, oh, we're going to release the levy. We're going to work this out. And if you don't work it out, so some, sometimes people will hire me, and I'll call. We'll call. We'll get the levies released, and, and everything's honky-dory, and then the, then the emergency's gone. And so people don't do anything again. They go back into hibernation, and we're calling, hey, let's get this information to the, to the IRS, because they'll come after you again. Oh, I don't Oh, you already got it released. It's okay. They'll, you know, they'll have to send me another notice. No, they don't have to send you another notice. And and they could just boom levy you again. And and then you'll call me and say, why didn't you stop him? I hired you to stop him. I tell you why I didn't stop him. Because you're not cooperating with us. We have to cooperate with the IRS. They give us deadlines. So when they when we call them and they've levied your bank account, and we say, hey, you know, he's having this hardship. Would you release the levy? And they say, and we convince them to release the levy, and they do. And then they usually give us a deadline. Okay, you, I'm going to give you. 
you three weeks. Get the guy's tax returns finished because he's not in compliance. Okay, so we're going to try to get the. So we're going to get that. What's the theme here on the show? And these are for people who are just tuning in because we were talking about professional help. Yes. Representation. That's right. Have proper representation so they can review your particular situation. So you don't go in blind and you go, oh, I get levied all these. Things. No, listen. Get so. represented. Follow the follow what they're saying, and they'll get you out of that problem. The best thing to do is to call someone before you get levied. But but you but sometimes people don't do that. And so if you get levied, then you call me at three one two six six four six six four nine. Anyway, I hope I answered the question. Thank you, Mr. Know-It-All. Thank you, Mr. Know-It-All. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about it. We have a YouTube channel that we record on Friday, and this show airs Sunday. Again, we record Friday, show airs Sunday. So if you do have a question, go watch our YouTube feed live. Go watch us live on Fridays, and we'll be able to answer your question on the chat box. It's a live chat. We'll be able to see it. We'll answer your question. Remember, Open Tax Resolution is there for you. 312-664-6649, or visit ChicagoTaxTeam.com. It's going to be your hub to fight the IRS. Now, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned, because after the commercial break, more IRS radio hour is going to be coming your way. We're going to wrap it up the only way we know how to, and that is looking out the window while nobody knows what we're talking about. Anyway, we're joking around. Stay tuned here on AM 560. The answer. answer.